Hey everybody, Runekin Methodical here, and today I'm going to be doing a guide on Conquest. Now, I'm mostly doing this because most of the people I know, um, they, they refuse to really get Deflectors because they're not very good at Conquest. And they have to, uh, they, they've, I've been asked several times to, um, give people wins, but I kind of like having my rank as it is, so I don't actually do that. But anyway, that's a, kind of why I'm making this guide. Uh, this is my setup. I'll go through the units one by one in a moment. First, I think it's better if I go through the commands. And the commands I use are Battle Cry, which will uh, make a target troop that you control gain 200 life and deal 200 more damage until the start of your next turn, which is pretty useful and can be used in combo with charge to take out most of your opponent's larger units, although the full combo does take 150 command points. The next one I use is Chastise, which can prevent a target opponent unit from moving on their next turn. It can't even be selected, so they can't attack with it or anything. So. Also, Vigilance usually doesn't really kill anything unless your opponent doesn't really know what he's doing. But it is kind of a line of defense, and worst case scenario, it'll for force your opponent to battle cry, waste their cooldown, and uh, use 75 command points, which is fine. It makes you attack first when the unit who has Vigilance is attacked, so you'll attack before anyone else. The other ones that people use our shield wall. All damage dealt to target troop you control is reduced by 100, no, reduced to 100, sorry, not by 100, until the start of your next turn. Uh, I don't really like this one, because with my setup, it's not really that useful. I mean, it's okay if you use it on like a champion or a knight or something, but where I run mostly archers and uh, scouts, it's not really that useful. Winds of Fate is pretty much never used. It randomly cools down one of your uh, commands that is currently on cooldown. Bombard is pretty good, but it does cost 200 command points, so I don't generally recommend using that. I've seen a few people use it, and it can be pretty devastating to just suddenly have one of your units drop dead, but they also don't get command points for it and for the kill, that is, and it does cost 200, so that's kind of an issue. Regenerate is somewhat broken, and I'll get into something about that later. Basically, it completely restores the hit points of a target unit, and it costs less than Bombard, but it does have a four turn cooldown. Stoicism is one of the other good abilities that you could use and it gives a target troop plus 400 hit points until the start of your next turn which is similar to battle cry but it uh, actually adds a four, full 400 instead of um, 200 split across attack and hit points which can be good but generally I don't really use it because battle cry is better I just like battle cry better troops um, also, each everything you can equip uses squad resources. You want to try to get a setup that uses as many as possible. I definitely recommend this command list unless you're doing... Well, I don't know. I, I'd pretty much recommend this command list always because, in my opinion, they're the best commands. And regenerate is really good in some situations, but I don't really recommend using it just because it does cost a lot. Its cooldown's not too bad, it's only four turns, but at the same time it's kind of broken, and yeah. The first unit is a champion. He has 400, 500 health and deals 400 damage. His range is one, that's... The range is how many spaces it can attack from where it's currently standing, and movement is how many spaces away it can move. So if the champion has not yet moved, its range is actually 5, because it can move 4 spaces and then attack an additional 1 space ahead. 
so that's something you have to keep in mind. Also their cost is uh, not only does it determine how many squad resources it costs to put on your squad, but when it's killed by an opponent they get that many command points in return for killing your unit. Now the one I don't have on here is the Halberder. It's got four movement and two range. It costs 75, which is a weird number, and it has uh, 200 health and 200 damage. It's not a bad unit, but I generally don't use it because of its mostly because of its weird cost. It might be a decent replacement to my foot soldier, though. Um, I I might have. I don't think I could do that without getting rid of something, though. So, yeah. The foot soldier has four movement, one range. It only does 100 damage, and it has 300 health. It's pretty much a stock unit. I put it on there because I wanted to use the whole 50. You might benefit more from another scout, but then you have 25 unused resources, and I'm kind of OCD. Also, four scouts is usually enough for me. The next unit is a knight, which has four movement and uh, 300 damage, 300 health. It is identical to the foot soldier, but does 200 more damage. Also, they cost a lot more, 100. Next unit is the Archer. Archers deal 100 damage, have 100 health, they can move 3 spaces per turn, and they have a range of 6, meaning that their total range, when they have not moved yet, is 9. They can be pretty devastating, but they're mainly used for defense, as they don't have much movement. Scouts, as weird as it sounds, because they're the weakest unit, are your main attacking unit in that they have six movement, one range, so that's a total of seven. If a unit is seven spaces away, you can hit them with a scout. They deal 100 damage, which is not great, and they have 100 health, which is also not great. But they only cost 25, which makes them really easy to uh, viably trade with your opponent. What I mean by that is, say you run in, and uh, you can combo this with Battle Cry and Charge to actually get 12 movement with your additional 1 attack range, as well as he'll be buffed to 300-300, and he'll actually be able to one-hit knights like that, which is really good. He can one-hit anything but a champion when you do that. So it is really good, and also generally, your opponent's going to have a lot of scouts and archers, and you're going to try to want to snipe the archers with the scouts and then try to trade off the scout. Because if you can trade a scout for an archer, like I said, they only cost 25, archers cost 100, you're getting 100 command points and they're only getting 25 back from that. So it is really good to do a move like that. Now, your formation isn't really overly important, but generally you're going to want to have your archers in the middle row because I just feel like that's line for them for defending. Um, your Knights of Foot Soldiers don't really matter so much, but you're definitely going to want to have your Scouts in the front line so that they have the most range off the start. Also, they can move to about here, I think, without or here or here without being uh, in danger of getting hit on the next turn by your opponent's Scout. But I'll show you that when we get into the games. I generally keep my Champion in the back line, keep him nice and safe, because he is worth a lot. Uh, you don't have to run a champion, but it's the only way to fill out your squad resources, and they can be very important once all the scouts are dead on both sides, as well as the archers. Your knights and champions become uh, very vital to winning after the initial onslaught of scouts is over. Okay, so now that you've seen the main setup that I usually use, I'm going to show you another setup that is rather commonly used, and that is two champion setup. And generally, I see two champions run with halberders and stuff like that, but I'd probably recommend running it with six scouts, two archers, and two champions, and the same command set as usual. Though some people, like I said, do prefer stoicism, and uh, some people actually prefer shield wall. Which, like I said, shield wall can be really good for the champions, but I just don't see cutting any of these because they are really good. I mean, maybe you could cut Vigilance because they do have a lot of hit points anyway. What's the cooldown on Shield Wall? It is... oh, hold on. Uh, 
Uh, the cooldown on shield wall is five turns, so never mind. I I definitely stick with these two if you're gonna do that. Also, chastise has to be up here because I'm kind of OCD. Uh, vigilance and chastise. But yeah, this is the basic setup that I'd recommend for this. And the formation, which I haven't edited it yet, but uh, you'd want to get all your scouts on the front line as usual, your archers in the back line, and then two champions, probably back here or in the middle. Now, what you're going to want to do with this is your scouts are more going to be for defense against your opponent's scouts, but you're still going to want to run in and uh, try to take out any archers or mages they might have. I actually didn't go over the mage, did I? Sorry about that. Oh, that's the wrong one. Mages are very similar to archers. They cost the same amount, and except they do 200 damage. They have 100 health, and they have uh, 4 movement and 4 range, which adds up to less than the archer by 1. I do prefer the archers for that reason. But the mages do do an extra 100 damage and can be very good at defending against this champion rush. Or, well, not really a champion rush, but a two champion setup. We'll get into champion rushes later, but I don't really recommend using or playing against someone who's champion rushing. And I will show you the setup for it, but I'm. If you do see someone champion rushing, you're better off not playing them. And again, I'd like to emphasize playing against someone with two champions, regardless of whether you're using this setup or a setup similar to my other one. Or a setup similar to this one or the other one. Um, playing against someone with two champions is. Uh, it is possible to win quite easily. But playing against someone who's champion rushing, it's nearly impossible to win unless you have this setup. If you have this setup and you um, can do it, I go ahead and take them on. But if you're using a setup similar to my main setup, I, I would recommend not ever fighting someone who is champion rushing and just quitting out when you see it. Alright guys, so... Um, the first thing that you need to know when you're in a match of Conquest is that on the first turn of the conquest, if you do go first, you will be at a slight disadvantage compared to your opponent, because on the first turn of the conquest, you do not gain command points. So, but on the second turn of the conquest, like the second player's first move, they will have 25 command points, but on the first player's first move, they won't gain any command points. But starting the second player's first move onwards, every turn you get 25 command points. And like I said earlier, you also get command points for every unit you kill. And what this means is that the player who moves second actually gets the first opportunity to attack because he will most likely be the first person to hit the 75 command point mark, which is the mark at which they can use charge and run in and try to snipe one of your more expensive units like a mage or an archer. And it's true that if you don't run a mage or an archer in your unit setup, you will have a um, slight advantage there, but you'll be at a slight disadvantage or possibly even a large disadvantage defense-wise. So if you are careful, then uh, you'll actually be able to um, save your archers and snipe the scouts and trade scouts and stuff like that. The main trades to look out for with scouts is um, when you battle cry a scout it can hit anything except for a champion so if you can do that if say for example you have 150 command points and you can use charge and battle cry at the same time you can pretty much hit a knight 100% of the time if you have a scout around the middle section which is a uh, obviously the two middle slices in the board which is basically the battleground and then the I actually have four marked off on the bottom I didn't notice that whoops it might actually be four I'm not sure if like the formation area is three or four I can't quite remember off the top of my head basically the middle area if you have a scout anywhere in that you will most likely be able to charge in 
because with charge, scouts move 12 spaces and they can attack the 13th ahead. So you actually have 13 range on your scout with charge. And with battle cry, it will be able to take down a knight and it will actually kill the knight before it can retaliate because it will one hit it. So then if you also cast vigilance on your scout, well, you run the risk of it being chastised, but that doesn't really matter because you are going to trade the scout anyway. And if it's not chastised, you can actually uh, usually snipe another unit afterwards because they won't attack something a scout that has battle cry and vigilance on it with anything else. Maybe the champion if it's in range, but you can plan around that as well. So. Uh, it's usually not a huge is issue. Now, other things you can do is using just charge you can snipe their mages or their archers which are very good trades to make because they're both worth 100 and scouts are only worth 25 so obviously you're at a net gain of 75 command points which is a very good place to be standing especially early on. So if you do move second you will have that opportunity to, to run in and snipe an archer straight off but at the same time you might be forced by your opponent to use a chastise really early on which might hurt your chances but at the same time you can snipe the scout to make up for a little bit of that and usually if you chastise their scout they'll chastise something else in return if they're rushing in so usually it will work out and it will be net even. Now something that's going to help you be really effective at playing Conquest is always trying to keep track of how many accommodations your opponent has and once you find out what skills they have on their set you want to know the cooldowns of all the skills and you want to try your best to keep track of when their skills are going to uh, come off cooldown and then they'll be up again so that you'll know to You'll, you'll know exactly when they can charge and when they can battle cry and you'll be able to plan around that and hopefully do a little bit better at getting in there and getting your opponent's units but you should always try to play as cautiously as you can super aggressive play can work but in a lot of situations it's better to just be a little more cautious I'm also planning to do a couple videos in which I just play some randoms on a one or one minute or thirty second timer and I'll try to talk you through what I'm doing on each turn of the conquest and hopefully that'll kinda help you see what I'm talking about more because I know explaining it straight off some of you might not grasp fully what I'm talking about and if I do like an actual video which I couldn't do for this because it would just be too long conquests usually go on for close to 20 minutes so I didn't want to make this video too long because it would probably be pushing 40 minutes and that's kinda long for a guide but I will have a couple of those out um, I'll probably just do one for now and if you guys want to see some more I can uh, I can upload some more I guess obviously just let me in, know in the comments if you do if this is something you want to see and I'll definitely upload one anyway and I will commentate while I'm playing and try to explain everything I'm doing and everything that's going through my mind and why I make the moves I do and hopefully that'll help a little bit for you guys to uh, kinda pick up on some strategy if you're not quite as strategically inclined as other players and hopefully it'll help you guys get some deflectors because I do know a lot of people struggle pretty hard with getting that uh, 1250 rank. So that's all for this video and I will get one of the matches up soon and I will see you guys then.